So what do we have? We have section 1.7, exploring data, linear models, and scatter plots. So the graph, the graph of an, a set of ordered pairs is called a scatter plot. So basically all this is is you have your x-axis, you have your y-axis, and you have different coordinates. So whatever your x and y, it gives you a set of data. That's all that is. So this is, you know, back from eighth grade where you plotted, you know, you went over three and up two and you made some plots. Okay? That's all that is. And, and when you do that and when you uh, put a bunch of points for your different ordered pairs, that's called a scatter plot. So it's not a graph, it's just a bunch of points. A mathematical equation that approximates the relationship between two variables is called a mathematical model. And now for the rest of your life in math, for pre-calculus and if you go further, a big deal is models. Because really, modeling is the whole reason we do math in school. This is what they don't tell you. Remember when you were in first and second grade and you said, why do we need to know this? Because this doesn't matter in my life. All that, teach you how to do all that stuff only so that you can make models. And what's the purpose of a model? Who can tell me what the purpose of a model is? The purpose of a model is to make a prediction, okay? And they use it every day in all kinds of ways. When the person, when you go on your iPhone in the morning and you say, what's the weather going to be like? Some weather person, some meteorologist using the computer has developed a model based on different atmospheric pressure and all these different variables. They've developed a model which predicts what the weather will be like. That's why you see stuff like there's a 70% chance of rain, okay? It's just a model. Uh, you can use models for all kinds of different things. When I worked on Wall Street, we, we made models, huge long models, that put in all kinds of different variables, like depreciation and interest rate, and all kinds of things you wouldn't imagine, in order to make predictions. In order to know, 13, if we continue to do this, this, and this, and these things happen, 13 years from now, how much money will we make? How much money will be, will be at risk that we have? All that kind of stuff. So this is really where math goes at this point. You've learned all the little ways to manipulate these equations in order to make these models. Okay, so we're gonna look at, uh, these scatter points, and if the y increases as the x increases, like you see in this first one, that's called a positive correlation. It just means that as one thing increases, the second variable increases. And so you see that it generally, sorry about that. Okay, so that increases. And so, you notice it doesn't have to be an exact line. It just is, if, if, if what you see is a tendency to increase. Now if I had all this, but I have one point up here, you would still have a positive correlation. Or, or if I had one down here, it would still be a positive correlation because there can be an anomaly, there can be that's one thing. But generally the trend, you notice the word trend, the trend is increased. That gives you a positive correlation. And then the same thing is with a negative correlation. So if you notice that things are trending down or things are tending to decrease as one variable increases, and so as this x variable increases, this y variable is decreasing, when that happens you have a negative correlation. And then finally, your book will give you this thing, and it gives you a bunch of plots, and you look at that, and you say, there is no correlation. Well, notice that I threw the word in there, discernible. There's no discernible correlation. That means that by looking at that, you can't tell if there's any relationship between the x and the y variable. That doesn't mean that there isn't a relationship, because there very well could be. There could be a relationship that you don't see or, or other variables that are coming to play that you don't realize. So that's why you're going to say no discernible. You can't discern. You can't tell what the correlation is. It's just a bunch of points to you, okay? These two, you can see this has a positive correlation and this one has a negative correlation. Okay, fitting a line to data. So finding a linear model to represent the relationship described by a scatter plot is called finding a line to data, okay? So I picked some data and I just picked these up. I put X and Y and it doesn't really matter. Now, as you go on in the book and as we go on in chapters, you're going to see it'll give you all kinds of different things. Years and population growth. There'll be all kinds of examples in your book and you'll do problems. But for these, I just picked an X and a Y. These are just coordinates. Apples and oranges. We're just comparing apples and oranges. It doesn't really matter uh, what we're doing. What matters is that you have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So you have ordered pairs. And so you notice I plotted some ordered pairs. Okay? So that's what I did here. Now, you'll notice what kind of correlation do we have? Positive. We have a positive correlation because as the x increases, the y tends to increase. Now notice that I took my first point and my last point, my 1, 1 and my 10.99, and I drew a straight line through those. Notice that every one of my points isn't on my straight line. They're close, <laughs> but they're not exact, okay? Because unless um, your model, unless 
everything <coughs> goes in what we call a sequence. If I talk about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then it would be a straight line. That's a linear, the function of a line, okay? The data we're plotting isn't going to be exact. So the idea is that we want to try to find the closest model. In other words, we want to find how, based on these 10 scatter points, if I went up to 1,362, way over here, what would my y be? Now, it's probably not going to be exactly 1,362, or whatever number I just said, because it can be off a little bit. Notice these are off a little bit, but, but it's close. So this line I drew here is pretty close, okay? Now that's not the only line I could have drew. I could have drew a line from here, from this starting point to this point right next to it, and I could have made a, a, a line, and let me see if this will work this time. I could have draw, drawn that line, or I could have drawn <coughs> that line, okay? So the idea is, you want to make a line. So I, my, in my red line, I used our regular slope-intercept form, and I said y equals mx plus b. The slope of my line here, because I started at 1, 1, and went to 10.99, is about 1, and it's actually not 1, because it's 9.99, but I didn't even do the math, so I just put 1 in for my slope. My well, y-intercept down here, is, this is going to go through 0, 0. This is just the line y equals x, okay? That's, I made this very simple so that I could explain it, okay? In your book, you're going to get, obviously, more complicated ones, and you know that. So I want you to understand that. So that y equals x. Now the idea is, is the line that I drew, the line y equals x, is that the best line? In other words, is y equals x the best model for this set of data that you have? Well, wait on that. Let's see. Okay. How well does our model fit the data? Well, mathematically, what you do, and you'll see this in your book, you'll compare the actual values to the, num to the values given by the model. So here I plotted my x's. And then my, these are the actual y coordinates that were on our table that I just had there. So I just put them over here. These were my y's, okay? And then a model, what I did was I took my, my line that I drew, which was y equals x, and I said, if y equals x, this is what the data should have said. So when I got to 1, I should have been at this. When I got to 5, I should have been at 5, but, but I was off. The actual value was 1.5. So, so my line is not accurate right there, uh, you know, not 100% accurate. It's off a little. Same with this line, this line, and this line, and this line, okay? So we take those differences by just subtracting. This isn't anything, you know, difference just means subtraction, right? So I took my x, subtracted my y, and then got my difference. And that's what these are. So you see here I'm off by 0.1. Here I'm off by negative 0.1, 0.2. It just tells me when I'm off, okay? Then I squared those. I took the square, all uh, right? I multiplied these by themselves. I, I squared them and to get those numbers. Okay? These, these were the numbers when I squared them. There's five of them. And then I added those five together. And when I added them together, I got 0.04. Okay. So you say, what's the big deal about 0.04? The sum of the squares of the differences between the actual values and the model is called the sum of the squared differences. So this is on your worksheet, so you'll be filling that in. It's the sum of the squared differences, okay? The model that has the least sum for the square, for the given data is called the least squares regression line. So in other words, our goal is we want this number to be as small as possible, which would mean what? That would mean that these numbers where they're off is as small as possible. So the best model would make this difference as small as possible. The best possible model would be one that would give you an exact number every time. But that's not possible most of the time. So you're going to have to get an approximation. So we call that model that has the least sum for the given data the least squares regression line. Now your, computer, your calculators, when we start doing these other calculators, are going to give you something called a correlation coefficient. And they use the letter R in your calculator in most books. That's what they use is R. So R is the correlation coefficient. And we call it R value. That number is going to be between negative 1 and 1. It's going to be somewhere in there. Okay, the closer the number is to one, the better your model is. If you get a R value that's negative point eight, that's not a good model. Okay, you the closer you are to one, the better your model is. So the best models are going to be ones that are going to be like point nine 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 seven or point nine times ten to the you know what. So that's going to be your best models. So you want these. 
You want your model to give you differences that are as small as possible. You want it to fit the, the data. Because the idea is this. Again, we know 1 through 10, but what, what we're going to get to is this. What happens, let's pretend these are years, 1 through 10. Well, what if I want to know what the Earth's population is going to be 100 years from now? Well, what, if, what, if, what, if, what happens when I get to 100? That's the whole idea, so we can predict. That's the whole point of a model, so we can make predictions. Okay? Uh, and by the way, we can also do this in the past. One of the things I did when I was at MIT, we, were, we did, we did uh, solar models where we, we mapped stars, and we did it backwards. We used regression to say, where were these particular planetary items, where were these stellar things 100 years ago? Where were they 1,000 years ago? So you, it makes predictions, because guess what? 1,000 years ago, nobody was taking pictures of the skies. There weren't cameras. So we don't know where some of this stuff was. And that's how they can determine comet paths and things like that. So they'll make predictions in the past, but usually what you're going to see in your book are these predictions in the future. So what's going to happen? So what model are we going to have that's going to give us the best idea of what will our value be 100 years from now? And it, whatever it is, it won't be exact. When we start out talking about the weatherman, right? No matter what the weatherman tells you, he can never tell you for certain next Tuesday what the weather's going to be like. They can, if they're a good modeler, they can give you a pretty good approximation, and they can be right most of the time. But they can never be right all of the time. Okay, so a model just gives a prediction. It's not 100% it's not accurate. Okay, so that's our R value. So what I want to do is do a regression. So can um, Ben use your calculator because I need mine and it doesn't have his yet. Hopefully yours comes in very soon, Ben. Do they give you a car, I think, Mr. Vickers? Do they have like an estimate now? Does anyone know what time this period ends with the chapel schedule? I know it's... 120. Right, I got five minutes, so hopefully I made this simple enough that we do it. Now, also, on your sheet, there's an example of this on your sheet. And you notice that I always delete off most of the answers. I didn't delete off this one. It gives you the model here on the second page. And the reason is I want you to be able to work that out when you're doing your sheet, and I don't want you to get to the end and have it wrong and then come in and just, it's wrong. Because we're not going to have 20 minutes in class to redo it. So if you get to the end and it's wrong, redo it until you can find it so you know how to do this. This is an important skill. You need to be able to do it. And I had to take a crash course because I used to do this with computers, and so the calculator is a totally different way to do it. And so let me give you these sheets as well. And these sheets should walk you through how to do a linear regression. So this may, it may take you a couple times, especially some of the examples in the book are going to be longer. I, may, I picked a simple one here for my 1 through 10 that we're going to do so that you know how to do it in class so I can hopefully do it in 4 or 5 minutes. The ones, on the, computer, the ones for the homework will be more difficult, so there'll be more stuff. So you have to follow this and you've got to be really exact, because if you make one mistake somewhere, the whole thing will be off. So I left you the answer on that one, and then there's another one for the homework that you'll have to fill in. Okay, so we're going to start out uh, by going from your home screen into the, uh, we're going to enter a spreadsheet. So if you all know how to go into it to make it a spreadsheet. It's that center box with the spreadsheet picture on it, okay? And you have to label at the top of your X column, you have to label your X and Y column, whatever you want it to be. Now, I picked, <laughs> cleverly enough, apples and oranges. Because, it really, again, I'm trying to make the point, it doesn't matter what the variables are. In the problems, they'll tell you, and so you'll have to put in actual things eventually, years or population growth or whatever it is. But for now, I just wrote apples and oranges because you're just comparing two things. So we can compare apples and oranges. It doesn't matter. At the top, mm -hmm. at the very top of your column. So I label it. And if you want to put AP or OR, I mean, as long as you know what it is, it, you know, you just have to have a label. If you leave a blank, this won't work. So you have to have a label. And then underneath that, you're going to put your X values and your Y values next to them. So 1, 1, 2, 2, all the way down to 10, 9.9. .9. So once those are all in, let me know. That's the, that's the beginning. But stay in your spreadsheet. Let me know when you got those labeled and they're in. By the way, tomorrow we will go over this homework, which should be short. There weren't many problems, and we'll go over the chapter summary. Bring in questions from the chapter summary. You know, you guys, um, at this stage of the game, were not... Uh, she gave you uh, review CT page 86. So, uh, you know, you may, and on some of those sections you can do one or two problems, and if you know how you know how to do it, you can move on. If you're not, you're not getting the right answer. Look at the odds in the back, or the evens, whichever one they give you. If, they're not, if you're not getting the right answers, 
You've got to continue to do more. So don't just limit yourself to whatever we have on the sheet. Do as many until you know you know how to do it. So bring in questions for us. I'll, I'm going to do the questions review that, that you brought in from the chapter summary that you just didn't know how to do. And we'll do those. So your test on, will be on Thursday. Okay. Does everyone got the spreadsheet done? Oh, we're not really going to. At least I'm not going to meet She's you She's not going to be here tomorrow. I have the ASVAB test. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We should do the test on Friday. Really? So we should get a date tomorrow. Yeah, I will help you tomorrow. We'll do more on Thursday. We'll do the test on Friday. Because I don't think I could do it on post it. But all right, that the columns all done? Yeah. All right, we're good on those? Yeah. All right. Now we're going to insert a graph. Do you know how to insert a graph? No. Okay. You do, okay. Yeah. You do. Menu. I'm trying to remember from my I. Data. If you follow this, you will be able to do this for your homework. Okay? And that was three minutes shorter than you guys said it would be, but oh well. Oh, it shouldn't have been. Insert a graph. It tells you right out here because I inserted the graph. Insert. I know how to do it before. It's around the oh, sheet. Insert. The sheet that Miss Nimbus came with was great. Alrighty. I only have insert so Yeah, I don't have insert. Actions. I'll figure it out. It's right on the sheet. If you follow the sheet, you'll be golden, I promise. 